Hi, I'm Murray Balance, and I'm a former professor at the University of Manitoba specializing in plant biotechnology. In Canada and much of the developed world, we are fortunate to live in societies where food is readily available. The abundance of food, which we take for granted, is reflected in several ways. The bounty of food on our store shelves, and the circumstance that only a small fraction of the population devotes any time to the necessity of primary agricultural production which creates this food. The fact that a few people can produce enough food for the rest of the population allows that the majority of people in the population to contribute in other ways to our society. Agricultural productivity and food security are essential to a stable and successful society. Until 1900, the global population grew slowly. In the past century, however, the population of the world has doubled to 3 billion in 1960, and by the year 2000 had again doubled to 6 billion. The increase in food production for the first doubling came largely by the expansion of agricultural land and through mechanization. The increase in food production to meet the needs of the second doubling of the century was achieved on essentially the same land base. It occurred in developing countries by wide adoption of the Green Revolution approaches, and in the developed countries by the use of modern technology and practices developed through research. The Green Revolution approaches included a number of things. Use of more productive crop varieties, use of chemical fertilizers to replace the soil nutrients removed by the crops, these new crops obviously demand a much higher fertility. And finally, the use of irrigation to again optimize water availability to the crop. In many cases, these changes were accompanied by greater mechanization, better cultural practices, and improved crop storage conditions to reduce post-harvest losses. In the developed world, significant investments were made, both by government and by private industry, in research to improve crop productivity. As we look ahead, the world population is projected to increase to 9 billion people by the year 2050. The annual population growth is expected to decline from approximately 75 million people currently to about 40 million by the year 2050. However, this translates on average into about 1.2 million additional people to feed each and every week for the next 40 years. How will these additional people be fed? Most of the land which is suitable for agricultural production is already in production. Some of it will be lost due to expanding cities and new roads and infrastructure to accommodate the larger population. Some is projected to become less productive due to non-sustainable production practices. Some will be lost due to climate change. Fresh water is an essential requirement of all life. Crops have a significant water need, but this varies from crop to crop. But given that we will have additional people needing water, as well as additional food requirements, which are going to need water, how will the water be shared out when water is a limiting commodity? New approaches and efficiencies are needed. The challenges for the future are complex. Clearly, we must improve on current farming practices globally to meet the needs for the additional food required. We must do this while sustaining the quality of our soil and water and protecting the environment at large. The natural environment provides many ecosystem services that are essential to the health of the planet and these have to be protected. Our response to these challenges will involve making difficult decisions on many issues. As tomorrow's leaders, today's young people need to understand the issues that are involved in sustainable food production to ensure that they can make rational decisions regarding food production practices and policies and the use of natural resources such as water and our farmland.